What's up traders? In today's video lesson, I will be showing you how to identify imbalance zones when trading smart money concepts using a rules based approach. So stay tuned. Now, if you've watched any of the previous video lessons, you will be very familiar with this particular markup. This is our simplified smart money concept setup. This is essentially what we look for when trading SMC. We want to identify the underlying trend, in this case bullish. We want to wait for a valid break of structure in the direction of the underlying trend. After that break of structure has occurred, we want to wait for price action to pull back towards a high probability zone such as the discounted pricing zone, after which we wait for a mitigation of a valid demand zone or a supply zone before entering the market to continue with that underlying trend. All right. Now, we've covered many aspects of this particular SMC setup in previous video lessons. All right. We've talked about multi multiple time frame analysis and how to identify external structure and internal structure swing points. We spoke about how to identify break of structure. We spoke about how to identify change of character and how that helps us identify those swing points. We spoke about premium and discounted pricing as a tool to help improve our win rate. We spoke about liquidity. We also spoke about how to identify supply and demand zones and how we can enter trades once price action trades into those supply and demand zones. And today I want us to talk about how to identify imbalance. Now, as always, we're going to start off with a little bit of theory, just giving you guys um, an explanation of what imbalance is, why it's relevant to smart money concepts. And then we're going to end the video lesson off by looking at some live practical examples. All right. So very quickly, what is imbalance? Well, Imbalance refers to the difference in the number of buy orders and sell orders in the market at any given time. Remember, for any market to exist, for every buyer, there needs to be a seller. This is something that we spoke about in our liquidity video, right? If you haven't already, I highly suggest that you go ahead and you watch the how to identify liquidity video. That video is very, very, very powerful. It breaks down exactly what a market is and how liquidity is used in the smart money um, approach to help identify really high probability zones, right? So in a market, for every buyer, there needs to be a seller. However, sometimes the market will experience periods where the number of buy orders and sell orders are not the same, okay? This means that one is significantly higher than the other. There are more orders of one type than the other. Now, what this does is it creates these areas or these zones on the chart where price is deemed to be imbalanced or inefficient. And that's what imbalance is essentially. And that's how imbalance is created. It's when there are significantly more of one kind of order than the other. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is, is that price action tends to return to these areas in order to fill these imbalance zones with the aim of restoring some kind of equilibrium in the market. Because remember, what we said is in order for a marketplace to exist, for every buyer, there needs to be a seller. So as soon as you have a lot more buy orders than sell orders, you will have this imbalance, this inefficiency in the market. And at some point, price action will look to restore the equilibrium that was messed up, essentially, when these significant amount of buy orders stepped into the market. All right. Now, to help you identify imbalance, I came up with two very, very simple rules, essentially. Um, one rule for when you're in a bullish trend and one rule for when you're in a bearish trend. Now, essentially, what you want to do is you want to focus on three candles at a time, especially um, as a beginner when you're starting out trying to identify imbalance. 
I want you to focus on three candles at a time. Now, when you're in a bullish trend, when you're in an established bullish trend, when you're looking at a bullish trend or when price action is pushing higher, you want to ask yourself the following question. Is the low of candle number three in line with or overlapping the high of candle number one? Okay, I'll say that again. Is the low of candle number three in line with or overlapping the high of candle number one? This is when you're in a bullish trend, all right? And then for a bearish trend, the question you want to ask yourself is, is the low of candle number one this time in line with or overlapping the high of candle number three? If your answer is yes to either of these questions, then your price is balanced or price is efficient, okay? If your answer, however, is no, i.e. the low of candle number three is not in line or is not overlapping the high of candle number one, then that means you now have imbalance or you have inefficiency in your price, okay? Now, just very quickly, if you're not aware of the anatomy of a Japanese candlestick, on the left, we have a bullish candle and on the right, we have a bearish candle, okay? Essentially, what you have is, you have the opening price of your bullish candle here, you have the low of your bullish candle down here, this would be the closing price of your bullish candle, and then this would be the high of your bullish candle, right? So notice how for a bullish candle, your opening price is lower than your closing price which makes sense because price action is pushing up, right? And then obviously the wicks denote your low point and your high point, okay? For a bearish candle, it's essentially the inverse. Your opening price will be at the top, your closing price will be at the bottom, okay? This would be your high, and then this would be your low. So price action is going from high to low, it's closing lower, therefore it is a bearish candle. Now, if we were to take these rules and apply them to a visual representation of price action, what we then have is we have these two markups. On the left, we have balanced price, and on the right, we have imbalanced price. Now, we can all agree that both of these markups show bullish price action, all right? They are my bullish candles. And we can see the price action is pushing higher on the left and we can see the price action is pushing higher on the right okay so using the rules now for a bullish trend what we want to do is we want to focus on three candles at a time and as we can see in this particular markup these are our three candles in here all right so this would be candle number one this would be candle number two and then this would be candle number three. So the question you want to be asking yourself is, is the low of candle number three in line with or overlapping the high of candle number one? In this particular case, you can see that the low of candle number three is in line with the high of candle number one. Therefore, our answer to that question is yes, that means that for these three candles, okay, for these three candles, price action is efficient. Price action is balanced. Why? Because the low of candle number three is in line with the high of candle number one because we are focusing on these three candles in here, all right? If we go a step further and if we now focus on the next three candles, then we can see that we're now focusing on these three candles in here. And then you ask yourself the same question because we are essentially still trading bullish. You wanna ask yourself, is the low of candle number three, in this case, this is my candle number three, is the low of candle number three in line with or overlapping the high of candle number one? In this case, you can see that the low overlaps the high of candle number one, that means that your answer is yes, and this particular price action is balanced. 
So here you can see that for this particular bullish push to the upside, over the course of these four candles, price action is balanced. Price action is efficient. We can essentially say that the number of buy orders and the number of sell orders for the duration of these four candles, all right, are the same, okay? If we now focus in and look at our imbalanced price action, what we wanna do is we wanna focus on these three candles in here, right? And again, it's a bullish trend, so we ask ourselves the question, is the low of candle number three in line with or overlapping the high of candle number one? Now you can quite clearly see here that the low of candle number three is nowhere near in line or overlapping candle or the high of candle number one. Now that means that your answer for that particular question is gonna be no, and that means that here you have imbalance, you have inefficient price action, okay? Now in order to mark out that imbalance, essentially what you want to do is you want to mark it out from the high of candle number one all the way to the low of candle number three. This is now what is referred to as our imbalanced zone, okay? I'll say that again. I'll start from the top. We're asking ourselves the question, because it's a bullish trend, is the low of candle number three in line with or overlapping the high of candle number one? We can see that the answer here is no. In fact, the low is nowhere near the high of candle number one. Therefore, this is regarded as inefficient or imbalanced price action. Now we can denote or we can mark out that imbalance by pulling on a zone from the high of candle number one to the low of candle number two. And this is what's referred to as our imbalance zone, all right? You'll notice some people refer to this zone as FVG, okay? Now, all they're referring to when they refer to it as FVG is they're referring to fair value gap. Essentially, what they're saying is, is that this is a gap in price action where there exists a disparity for fair value, all right? Now, fair value is essentially when buy orders and sell orders are the same over a period of time, okay? So this is how we identify imbalance in the markets. Very, very simple, okay? Now that we have that theory in place, now that we have those rules in place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop onto the charts and we're just gonna look for some examples of imbalance zones using the rules that we've just discussed here, all right? So, so here we are on USD CAD. This is the one hour chart. Um, I think this is, yeah, this is price action from the 23rd of August. And we're gonna now use these rules to try and find some areas of imbalance. So remember, we're focusing on three candles at a time, okay? So if we look at this particular price action in here, I think we can all agree that price action is pushing down lower. Why do I say price action is pushing down lower? Well, purely because we are creating lower lows, okay? And we can see that here we're creating lower highs. So straight off the bat, before anything else, we can see that here we have a large area of imbalance, okay? So if we zoom in a little bit more and if we focus in on what price action is doing, we're going to be looking at these three candles in here. So we're gonna be looking at one, two, three, okay? So here, we can all agree that we're looking at a bearish trend, all right? Price action is pushing down. So this is going to be candle number one, and then this is going to be candle number two. So when we're looking at a bearish trend, the question we want to be asking ourselves is, is the low of candle number one, all right, is the low of candle number one in line with or overlapping the high of candle number three. So there's the low of candle number one. 
this is the high of candle number three as you can see and if i actually bring on a line tool here just to help denote that a little bit more you can see that we do not have this low in line or overlapping the high of candle number three that means that we have an area of imbalance that exists in here right so that is imbalance price action this means that over the course of these three candles in here okay the number of sell orders were significantly more than the number of buy orders so we have created this area of imbalance now if we just look at price and if we just look at what price action did so we had this area of imbalance okay in here what we can see is is that after price action pushes down we have price action coming in and creating a new low then we have a steady bullish pullback and you notice how this bullish pullback comes in and almost perfectly if i just extend this line here notice how price action almost perfectly pulls back to completely fill this imbalance before rolling over and continuing with the underlying bearish trend that's not a coincidence that is price action coming back to fill or to restore some kind of equilibrium in the price before continuing with the underlying trend all right so if we look at it now from a smart money concepts point of view what we can see is we can see that we have a valid break of structure to the downside in here okay so this is our one hour break of structure what this one hour break of structure essentially does is it originates okay so if i just very quickly if i remove this if i pull this um, just a little bit lower you can see that this one hour break of structure originates from this one hour okay it originates from this one hour supply zone now how do we know that this is a valid supply zone well because we have a bullish engulfing candle right that forms after the zone is created we have a valid break of structure after the zone is created and we have this imbalance that is left behind of the zones created so this is a valid supply zone and we can see the price action then pulls back up we obviously don't quite mitigate or tap into the zone if you are someone that trades the open of zones you'd probably want to front run your orders just a little bit but essentially you're looking to trade from this particular zone you're looking to cover let's say this high and you're looking to trade price action down towards this level in here that's a 4.9 all right so this is obviously a perfect example of a smart money concept setup where you have imbalance left behind just below a supply zone we have price action pulling back okay so if we if we reinstate our imbalance zone in here you can see the price action pulls back it fills that imbalance it just about misses out on tapping into a one hour zone before rolling over taking our weak low and then continuing with that underlying bearish trend right that is essentially what imbalance zones is and how it ties into our smart money concepts approach now it is important for you to note that it will not always play out that way now if we look at the next three candle arrangement in here so essentially from this we have a new low form and we obviously have price action pushing down as you can see in here we are now going to focus on these three candles in here all right so we have candle number one candle number two and candle number three so again we're in a bearish trend we ask ourselves the question is the low of candle number one in line with or overlapping the high of candle number three obviously here the answer is no why is the answer no well if we bring on our line tool again we can see that the low of candle number one is significantly higher okay significantly higher than the high of candle number three in here what this does is it creates or it forms this 
imbalanced zone in here okay so because we have this imbalanced zone we can anticipate that at some point price action will pull back to fill this imbalanced zone before continuing with the underlying trend now you need to understand that price action won't always completely fill an imbalanced zone and there is no time frame for when an imbalanced zone needs to be filled a lot of time price action will leave behind imbalanced zones and it will take hours upon hours sometimes even days sometimes even weeks before that imbalance zone is formed or before that imbalance zone is filled right so in this case you can see after the imbalance zone is created we do have price action trading slightly into it it's not completely filled all right it continues down lower so if we just look at what price action did a little bit further down the line you can see that this is my imbalance zone in here okay so there's my imbalance zone and notice how price action not only fills the imbalance zone but completely shoots through it to continue with a completely new trend right because at this particular point we have now gone from a bearish market state putting in lower lows or lower highs rather and lower lows to then breaking this high and then changing trend to bullish okay now if you were looking at this particular price action and you notice that we had this supply zone that formed in here all right notice that this is again a valid one hour supply zone okay let me just change the color of this so let's make that red so this is my imbalance zone this is my supply zone we can see that this is a valid supply why we obviously have the we have the engulfing candle we have the valid break of structure we have the imbalance this is a valid zone this is a valid supply zone okay but notice how if you are looking to trade okay if you are looking to trade from this particular supply zone you would have immediately after being tapped into your into the into the trade you would have immediately have taken a loss here so just because you have identified a valid one hour supply zone and just because there is an imbalance zone below that one hour supply zone it does not mean that price action will come and mitigate the zone and continue bearish because there are no guarantees in the market you need to understand that you are playing a probabilistic game okay this is obviously depending we don't know what the context the higher time frame context is here but this is a higher probability setup so the odds of this particular setup giving you the bearish reaction is a lot higher than the chart than the times or the odds that this is going to happen where price action just shoots through so I want to make it very clear, even though you are able to identify a high probability setup like this, that meets all of your rules, that has that imbalance zone, it does not mean that price action will respect it and continue down lower, okay? But essentially, that's how you combine imbalance zones with your supply and demand zones to find those higher probability setups because we saw it playing out in here, okay? We saw it play out almost perfectly you'll notice that you have an imbalance zone in there. So notice how you have an imbalance zone that doesn't actually lead to a bullish push up, okay? You have another imbalance zone down here. So if you mark that out, and guys, feel free to, over the weekend, right? Even during live market conditions, just go ahead and mark out these imbalance zones and look at how price action interacts with them. In this particular case, notice how, okay, you have this imbalance zone just below it, just below that imbalance zone. You now have a demand zone in here. So let's mark that out as a one hour demand zone, okay? We know obviously that it is a valid demand zone because you've got the engulfing candle, you've got the break of structure, you've got the imbalance. Notice how here, this one hour demand zone it actually gives you a tap into the zone that's a 
a valid mitigation. So that is a level that you can comfortably trade from. And let's just say you're aiming for imbalance. What I like to do is I like to aim for imbalance, especially when I'm trading intraday. So even if you just trade or even if you just aim for this imbalance zone that we identified earlier, you can see that you're going to be taking a 4.5 hour trade here that quite easily reaches your target. So using the rules that I showed you in this video, go ahead, open up any bit of price action that you want and just practice identifying imbalance zones, right? Identify those imbalance zones and look at what price action does when it comes in to those imbalance zones. Also, try and identify whether or not there is a valid POI, whether there is a valid supply or demand zone that forms just above or just below the, the imbalance zone. More often than not, you will notice that these imbalance zones, right, come from or are a result of a supply or demand zone that is created. Because remember what we said in our video on supply and demand, these zones are areas where a large amount of orders step into the, into the market. So in this particular case, we quite clearly have a lot of buy orders stepping into the markets, pushing price up. The characteristic of an imbalance zone is, it's when you essentially have a large disparity, a large difference between the number of buy orders and the number of sell orders, all right? If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button. Do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. I appreciate you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.